Welcome to the Survivor's Logbooks. Today's entry is all about the occult's favorite knife, the Ceremonial Dagger, an item bearing both notoriety and infamy. The Ceremonial Dagger is a high priority item that will fire four heat seeking spirit bolts after you kill an inhabitant of the planet. The bolts all deal 100% damage each, and stacking the item gives you two more spirit bolts. This item is a veteran as it has been included as far back as the oldest released builds of the game or at least as far back as 0.30.1.1. The risk of rain one forms do not go any further back than that. The item has a legacy of being very highly regarded whenever you first start playing the game, as it is a decorative knife with a stylish design and a flashy effect. A total of 400% damage, if all the bolts hit the same target that is, is in general not that impressive, especially since you have no control of which targets the bolts will prioritize, let alone if they all hit the same target. Interestingly enough, the item received zero changes throughout the entirety of Risk of Rain 1's 3 year lifespan. Despite this, it would soon find itself to become one of the most hilariously broken items after 1.1.1 update, the one that added in the artifacts. In concept, the ceremonial dagger is actually quite strong, it's just that the numbers are keeping it down. If only you could increase its damage by, I don't know, 500%? Oh hi Glass! Turning on the Artifact of Glass makes the Ceremonial Dagger one of the most absurd red items. When you kill an enemy, the bolts will now deal so much damage, they can kill the creatures on their own, spawning even more bolts, resulting in a genocidal chain reaction. Huh, just like the First World War. If you take a gander at the lore for the Ceremonial Dagger, you'll find it depicts a smug cultist somewhere reminiscing about a non-believer who could not save his sister from a ritual, being content with it as the ritual should please her. Keep this her figure in the back of your head. As things were back then, this log did not give us much apart from some minor but highly valued world building, showing us that despite the humans having advanced quite far technologically, old fashioned traditions akin to human sacrifice tagged along the advancements. The dagger is sent to a tomb site on Venus, but I do not think that was where the ritual happened, as why would you send a dagger you found on Venus to Venus with a spaceship? Decorated knife returned to Risk of Rain 2, keeping its rarity and sporting a more tribalistic look with a blade that you could almost think was made out of obsidian. Balance wise the dagger was quite sharpened, now sporting 150% damage and every new stack of the dagger would give you plus 3 spirit daggers instead of plus 2. Oh yeah that is another thing, now the spirit bolts were actual ghostly daggers and they look pretty damn cool. Picking up the item would now give you a spectral arm out of your back holding a knife. They really did a great job visualizing this item in particular. It felt great to get and had a lot of visual flair. They dealt good damage and stacking them to unleash a tidal wave of destructive ill-mannered daggers was a personal highlight of mine. I suppose the only issue was that the daggers could be rather unreliable and often miss. This would be addressed in the Scorched Acres update where they fixed their AI to make them more accurate and performant. Excellent, now the item is perfect, no need to change it anymore. But stacking the daggers now would not increase the amount of daggers. Quite a disappointing change, if I may say so. The power level was kept, if not strengthened. But a lot of visual impact was lost. Oh well, we'll float on anyways. It was not until the artifacts update on the 31st of March 2020 that daggers would be impacted in any way. In this case it was making it so the pesky scavengers could not get their hands on them, as they were scarily good at wielding them. The Artifacts update also brought back the Artifacts, and of course Glass returned. Oh hi Artifact- Oh why- oh, I forgot this was Glass! I'm a moron! Enabling it will of course make it so the game plays itself whenever you get a sacrificial dagger. As they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Lore wise the ceremonial daggers are entangled in the Nakohana part of the lore. A cult dedicated to worshipping her concepts. Those concepts are well around an equilibrium of life and death, and how there must be a balance between them. I detail this more in the latter part of my lore misconceptions and frequently asked questions video. The log for the dagger in particular details how two or three survivors are being hunted down by some golems. I would guess they're stone golems, since the rock golems are probably too busy picking flowers, or dead. The noteworthy survivors are Marion, Hitchcock, and the one unnamed individual we see all of this through. Hitchcock dies a brutal death, and Marion pulls out the dagger and desperately tries to convince the unnamed person to kill her with it, as a she, Nakwana, will save them. 
The unnamed person refuses, but after seeing that they have no choice, they reluctantly stab Marion with it. Later logs confirm it worked out, but this did break the mind of this person. It is interesting to think that even as far back as Risk of Rain 1, the ceremonial dagger log would mention Ashi. Was the Nakohana concept planned all the way back then, or did it just write the log in the first game with a cultist theme and got the idea to flesh it out after bringing it back for the second one? With the cultists being on a different planet in the first game, and their book the Natormat being found on Petriorker V, we can ponder on how far Nukohana's influence really reaches. That is about all we have when it comes to the ceremonial dagger. A blade soaked in the dark arts and tied to painful sacrifice. A tool of desperation which leads to destruction. This has been the Strivers Logbooks. Over and out.